Hello fans and friends across the universe and welcome to my YouTube channel from me to you. My name is Keir Smith. For today's video I'd like to talk about one of Paul McCartney's mid-80s solo albums, the much maligned Press to Play album and I'm here to tell you that it isn't that bad. There's an old and tired narrative that Paul McCartney was going through somewhat of a creative dry patch in the 80s. I myself don't subscribe to that point of view. I thought 1982's Tug of War album was excellent. And there's some fine moments for sure on the following year's Pipes of Peace, although that album drew criticism from the music press. Then came 1984's film fiasco with Give My Regards to Broad Street. Okay, so Paul's not a great filmmaker, but the music was still there with the brilliant lead single, No More Lonely Nights. But as Paul started writing songs in early 1985, for what would become the Press to Play album. He was certainly looking for some inspiration and maybe even a change of musical direction. He teamed up once again with Eric Stewart of 10CC fame, who co-wrote six of the 10 songs on Press to Play. Paul drafted in the hot producer of the day, Hugh Padgham, who had worked with the likes of Phil Collins and The Police. And after some disagreement about the album's musical direction, Eric Stewart left the recording process halfway through. Hugh Padgham remarked that the material that Paul was giving him wasn't that good. And Press to Play ended up being an album that neither Eric Stewart, Hugh Padgham, nor Paul McCartney were entirely happy with. The album charted as low as number 30 in the US and number 8 in the UK. Now, these were low chart placings by Paul's high standards. And it doesn't help that Paul himself casually disregards the album as, I quote, not very successful. And Paul has never played any of these songs live, to my knowledge, other than one live performance of Only Love Remains at the 1985 Royal Variety performance. Which is a shame, really, because I can think of a good few songs on the Press to Play album that would be amazing live. And so Press to Play has unfairly, in my opinion, been resigned to history as one of those crappy 80s Paul McCartney albums. And... But it's better than its reputation, trust me. And with that said, let's get to the music and I'll tell you about it. The album opens with Stranglehold, which is a great opening track. And there are few Paul McCartney solo albums that have an opening track as good as this in my book. I really like Paul's hushed vocals in the verses that then lead to the big chorus. The rhythm section is tight and loud and I really like the blaring saxophones too. And I don't know why, but I really like that lyric I'd be happy to lay low, inevitably bound. I would only be doing my duty. It's a super catchy song, feel good stuff. And as I say, a great opener. Next, we get a two part song, Good Times Coming, Feel the Sun. And this fades in with chants of Good Times Coming that are followed by these big drums before the song settles into a quasi reggae groove. And I like this. I really like the bridge section where Paul sings, I'm loving you now, followed by that frazzled guitar break. And that morphs into the Feel the Sun section with that heavy drum beat and Paul's vocals are that bit more invested. When Paul sings that chorus line, Feel the Sun shining in on you and the guitar parts around it, it's glorious. I love it. It makes me feel good. The harmonies are fantastic here and there's a searing guitar solo by Carlos Alomar towards the end of the song, which is brilliant. It's another fantastic two-in-one song by Paul. I think it's great. So we're two for two. A great start, but... It's not all good. We've got Talk More Talk next, which is okay. It suffers from what I call that bang and clatter 80s production. But this is very much an experimental piece. And Paul picked out quotes and phrases that he liked, like, I don't like sitting down music, which he plucked from a Tom Waits interview, apparently. And voices are sped up and slowed down for effect. Some of the wordplay is good here. I like the lyric, not quite a hundred, less than a ton. It's an interesting listen, but I've never really settled with this one. It's neither good nor bad. But Footprints is next, which is a really nice song. And this always conjures up images in my mind of a dark winter's night. It's beautifully picked and played with acoustic and Spanish guitars. And there's also some interesting glowing synth parts in there, which work really well. And it's an interesting song. And I've always thought that it's uncharacteristically moody from Paul. Bar the mild lift in the chorus where he sings White Blanket, hiding the traces of tears she didn't see. And closing side one of the original LP is Only Love Remains, 
a glorious McCartney piano ballad with a stirring string arrangement that blooms. And in particular, I really love Paul's lyrics here when he sings, if you should ever feel that something's wrong, I'm going to want to put it right to bring a happy ending to our song. And I like that so much because, in a nutshell, that's how Paul McCartney makes me feel. When I listen to him, I think, it's going to be alright, it's going to be okay. And that's a wonderful thing. And that soaring middle eight is so good when Paul sings old enough and strong enough to stretch across the world. And the song builds up nicely and Paul stretches his vocal out on that final part for the big finish. A great vocal. Brilliant. It's a truly great McCartney ballad and he's written a few. I don't know, I always feel cleansed after listening to Only Love Remains. It's a wonderful thing he does. It's, it's a pure, it's pure McCartney. Side 2 opens with the lead-off single for the album, Press, and this is a lot. It's a full-on 80s production, but an excitable, infectious and super catchy pop song. Paul whoops and yelps like a horny teenager. But despite the heavy production, I really like the guitars on this song, and another great guitar solo too. And I think that Press is one of a kind. I don't think he ever released anything quite like that ever again, but... I like it, it's a really good song. And from the bright and polished pop of press to the dark and gloomy Pretty Little Head. This is amazing, 10 out of 10 stuff. Yes, another full on 80s production, but it works really well here. Keyboards, drum machines, a grinding guitar sound and various other instruments that trickle in and out of the mix. It's a really engaging listen. Just don't ask me what it's about because I have no idea. It's a bit spooky and creepy and a bit bonkers, but I think it's brilliant. And it's a real shame that this experimental side of Paul is often missed or disregarded because it's often where you find some of his best stuff. I will happily go on record as saying that Pretty Little Head is one of my top 10 favourite solo Paul McCartney songs. I think it's that good. And then we get a song like Move Over Busker, which starts well enough with a scorching riff, and then it settles into a mid-paced rocker with silly lyrics about Mae West and a sweaty vest. And again, the guitar solo is very good here, but the main bulk of the song, the verses and the chorus, are effortless and not in a good way. It's painfully average. Up next is the song Angry, and this is the power trio of Paul McCartney on vocals and bass, Phil Collins on drums and Pete Townsend on guitar. And Paul does his best job at sounding angry and fails. What the hell gives you the right to tell me what to do with my life? He crams the words in in a pent up frustrated way, but it doesn't sound convincing. It's loud, it's fast paced, it rocks along. It should be good, but it isn't. And I've always cited this as one of my least favourite Paul McCartney solo songs. And lastly, coming in to save the day is However Absurd, which is a big grandiose production with lots of different instrumentation and this is an odd song and Paul has effects on his voice and sings these rather odd lyrics he is twitch like a dog breaking eggs in a dish do not mock me when I say this is not a lie however absurd it may seem it's confusing stuff and maybe that's the point here it's a bit odd it's a bit weird as Paul later sings it's a funny thing half serious with our hands on our ears and the song builds and builds with the added swell of the orchestra and it goes for that big finish but it never really gets there and it sort of peters out a bit for me it's not a bad song in fact i rather enjoy it at times but it always feels like a less than satisfactory ending to the album so that's press to play much better than its reputation it's got some real high moments but Admittedly, some forgettable moments too, but more good than bad for sure. And I've always applauded Paul here for taking a new approach and experimenting that bit more. And what he got with Press to Play was an electronically dense, fresh and contemporary sound, I guess. And it doesn't all work here, but it's not that bad. So come on all you Press to Play fans, I know you're out there. Let's drag this album out of the mud and elevate it. Please leave your thoughts on this album in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, peace and love. Bye for now.